dear friends, we are in the presence of the Eucharistic Lord. Through Mary to Jesus, Mary always leading us towards Jesus. We are looking at the sacrament, the presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, the real, substantial and true presence of Jesus. He is in, in our midst, looking to our eyes. Let's speak to him in our hearts, looking at his presence here, silently, for a few minutes. Silent adoration before the Blessed Sacrament. from Scripture, uh, from John's Gospel, in the Sunday readings, 
and will continue to do, do so for the next couple of weeks. St. John does not have a, a narrative of the institution of the Eucharist as the other Gospels do, but in chapter 6 of his Gospel, he helps us understand the significance, the meaning of the Eucharist, the great gift that Jesus gives us. You'll recall in this chapter of John's Gospel, a huge crowd has come to Jesus to listen to him. And Jesus recognizes their need. He is not indifferent to the crowd. He is not indifferent to their hearts. But John tells us that he has compassion on them. And Jesus asks the disciples, what are we going to give them to eat? They're hungry. Jesus cares for them. And they bring him five loaves and two fish. That's all they could find. The disciples say, well, how can such a small amount of food satisfy this huge crowd of 5,000 people? And so Jesus takes the five loaves and the two fish, and he multiplies them and feeds this enormous crowd. The miracle of the multiplication of the loaves. Jesus feeds the crowd that is hungry. He gives them bread to eat, to satisfy their hunger. But Jesus also knows that they are spiritually hungry. Many of them, he knows, are searching for something in their lives. That's why they've come to listen to Jesus. They've been impressed with the miracles he performs, healing those who are sick. And Jesus reaches out to them, not only in their physical need for food, but also in their spiritual need. And he responds by teaching them by teaching them the truth, truth about God who created them, truth about God who loved them and wants to embrace them in his love, wants to offer them his compassion, wants to offer them forgiveness for their sins. And Jesus' teaching will become real to them as he dies for them on the cross, as he pours out his whole self in order to forgive their sins, to show how much God loves them. As we look at Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, see Jesus who poured out his body, poured out his blood for us on the cross for the sake of our sins to bring us back to God, to reconcile us to God. So Jesus has compassion on the crowd. He feeds them because they're hungry. But he has compassion on their spiritual need. And he teaches them, teaches them about God and his love for them. But what is surprising in the sixth chapter of John's Gospel, is that Jesus goes further than this. In showing his compassion to the people, he gives them not only bread, not only his words, but he gives them his very self. He says in this passage of John's Gospel, I am the bread of life. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He himself is the bread that nourishes them. He himself will satisfy the deepest longings of their hearts. And on the cross, Jesus' body is broken for them. Just as the bread is broken in order to feed us, his body is broken on the cross for our sake. And his blood is poured out for us. Jesus pours out himself 
to give us all that we need to satisfy everything that we long for. In John's Gospel, Jesus' actions help us understand the gift of the Eucharist. In the Eucharist, Jesus nourishes us with his body and blood. He gives us true food when we are hungry, when our hearts are longing for something more. He gives us himself. He gives us hope. He gives us new life when we might be discouraged or feel empty or feel lost in life. Jesus gives us himself in the Eucharist. And we come before him now with the longings of our hearts. We come before him, we're searching for something in life, something more to satisfy the movings of our heart. If we feel empty or lost or discouraged in life, we come to Jesus. Come to him who gives us hope, who renews us and refreshes us, as he refreshed the crowd that was hungry in this gospel passage. Jesus has compassion on us. He gives us his very self. And in the Eucharist, Jesus sends us out. He refreshes us. He gives us new energy. He gives us life. He sends us out. When we come together on Sundays to celebrate the Eucharist, we celebrate his Paschal mystery, and we raise our own prayers. We join them. It is Jesus who takes all of our prayers and unites them with his prayer that he offers to his Father in heaven. The Eucharist is something that we do on Sunday to gather and worship God, but the Eucharist is also something that we live. We live every day of our lives. We live the Eucharist by lives of thanksgiving, offering our life in thanksgiving to God. Often we express our thanks with friends as we gather for a meal together. If you have invited guests to come to your house for a special meal, we work hard to prepare the food, to prepare everything for our guests. This expresses our love for them, expresses our joy, the friendship that we share with people in our lives, our family, and our intimate friends. We also live the Eucharist by our words and actions. What we say, what we give to our, our brothers and sisters, our kindness, these bear witness to Jesus, who is the bread of life. We give food to the hungry, just as Jesus had compassion on the crowds and fed those who were hungry before him. We give food to the hungry volunteer in soup kitchens, in food banks, because Jesus cares for those who are needy, and we are there for them. This is what it means to live out the Eucharist in our lives. We reach out to those who are broken, <laughs> discouraged, lonely. We, we reach out to our young people who are searching for something more in their lives. Often there's an openness to Jesus. We reach out to those who are lonely and have no one, volunteering in nursing homes, visiting the sick in our hospitals, some people who have no one to come to see them. Like Jesus, who gives himself to us in the Eucharist, we live that by giving ourselves our whole lives in love for the people around us, our families, our friends, the people in need, the hungry and the poor in our community. Living the Eucharist is giving of our whole selves in love 
as Jesus gave himself to us in the Eucharist. Today, as we come before Jesus in the Eucharist, we turn to Mary on the feast of her Assumption into heaven. Mary is our model. The gospel passage that we just listened to for the feast of the Assumption of Mary began with Mary's visitation. Mary finds out that she is pregnant with Jesus by giving her yes to the angel. And the angel told her, your cousin Elizabeth, who was thought to be barren, is now going to bear a child. And so Mary makes this long journey to visit Elizabeth. Mary is pregnant with Jesus. She is the one who brings Jesus to her cousin Elizabeth. And Elizabeth recognizes this in that gospel passage. She cries out because the child in her womb leaps for joy, recognizing through the Holy Spirit that Mary is pregnant with Jesus. Elizabeth says, Blessed is she who believed that the Lord's words to her would be fulfilled. Mary, in her <coughs> trip, her journey to visit Elizabeth, is the Christ bearer. Mary brings Christ to Elizabeth. And we know that Mary was able to do that because of her faith. When the angel approached her, Mary put her faith in God. Even though she didn't understand, even though she was fearful, she trusted in God. She believed in Him. She abandoned herself to God in her life. And she becomes the Christ bearer. In living out the Eucharist, we look to Mary as our model because we are called, like Mary, to bring Jesus to our brothers and sisters. As Mary brought Jesus to Elizabeth, when we receive Jesus in the Eucharist, he sends us out, like Mary, to bring Jesus to our brothers and sisters in need. We can say that we're not worthy. We can say that we are weak. But if we look at this passage in John's Gospel, Jesus takes the five loaves and two fish. And the disciples say, well, what is this? For a crown of 5,000, what good will it do? But Jesus takes it and blesses it and multiplies it so that it feeds the crowd of 5,000, the miracle that he performs. It must have been a powerful statement to the disciples that their own efforts, their own human limitations will, be, will seem totally inadequate. I know that parents feel that way about their children. They want to do their best to raise their children, but they feel inadequate. They don't know if they're making the right decisions. But Jesus assures us that he takes our humble efforts. He takes us in our weaknesses, all our warts and, 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 and flaws. We're not perfect. He even took me to do the job that he has asked me to do as bishop for the past 10 years. But I often said, why did he choose me? How could I possibly be a good shepherd to these people? Jesus takes us the limited gifts and talents that we have, and he says, that's enough. That's all I need. Just like he takes the five loaves and two fish. That's sufficient. That's all you need. I will give you the rest. As we come before the Eucharist, this is what Jesus says to each of us. We can't use as an excuse, well, I am weak, I have my flaws, don't choose me, Lord, I'm not worthy. Jesus says, no, I will provide you with all that you need to do the work that God has given you. And so we come to the Eucharist in our hunger, and Jesus fills us 
with his life. He strengthens us with his own body and blood. He takes our humble efforts. Like Mary, he makes us an instrument of his love and his peace. As we come before the Blessed Sacrament today on this feast of the Assumption of Mary, we praise and thank God for the gift, the wonderful gift that we, get, we receive in the Eucharist, the great gift that God gives us in Jesus' body. We pray that God will strengthen us through our devotion to the Eucharist, that he will give us new life and hope to overcome any discouragement that we might have. And as we come before Jesus in the Eucharist, we acknowledge that he calls each of us to live this Eucharist in, in our lives. And we pledge to do that with everything, with all the gifts and talents that God has given us. We pledge to live what we receive in this wonderful sacrament. We pledge today to bring Jesus to our brothers and sisters. <laughs> the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. In our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood, help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Blessed be God. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be His most sacred heart. Blessed be His most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. 
Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary, most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. 